want to make informed, data-driven decisions that have an impact on people, we first need to understand how those data are captured and verified. It's only when we have reliable data that we can trust in our analysis to support decision-making. In this video, you will see how data are entered into DHIS2. In the next video, you'll find out how DHIS2 helps ensure data quality. DHIS2 works as a centralized data warehouse capable of capturing data from a number of different sources and devices, including direct entry through the web or an Android device, SMS, and even other data sources, such as spreadsheets or other electronic systems. Within the DHIS2 platform, there are several data collection tools, including the Data Entry app, the Capture app, and the Tracker Capture app which you can use to collect different types of data. Let's briefly review three examples of different scenarios where data are captured. First, let's say we're managing a vaccination program and want every health center in the country to send us a report every month on the number of vaccinations they have given. To do this, they log into DHIS2, open the data entry app, and fill out a form. What are the steps we need to follow to enter these data? Let's go to the platform and see how it works. After logging in, go to the Applications icon in DHIS2 and open the Data Entry app. Then use the Search field to find the facility. From the Dataset dropdown, click the Immunization Program. And finally, select the time period you want to update. To enter the data, click on the Data Value cell and enter the values. Keep in mind that in this case, the data entry form in DHIS2 has already been set to collect the data at regular intervals or periods. In this case, once a month for each health facility in the country. For data that are reported according to predefined periods such as daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly, we use the term aggregate data. Aggregate data forms are most commonly used to collect numerical counts, such as the total number of vaccinations given in a regularly recurring report. In DHIS2, aggregate data is captured using the Data Entry app. Let's look at a second example. Let's say we want the facilities to register every time a new COVID-19 case appears in real time instead of waiting until the end of the week or month to submit an aggregate reporting form. To do this, the facility enters the data using the Capture app as soon as they are notified of the COVID-19 case. What are the steps to enter these data in DHIS2? Let's go back to the platform. To enter this COVID-19 case data, select the Capture app from the Applications icon, then search for the facility, and select the Event Program, in this case, COVID-19 Cases, Events, and then click on New Event. Once you fill out the form, the data are stored in DHIS2. It is important to note that the individual COVID-19 case data in this example is captured based on the place and time it was reported. It is not tied to a larger set of information for a specific patient, such as a medical record. For data that can be reported at any point in time, instead of on regularly scheduled periods, we use the term event data. Event data can be used to record a variety of kinds of information, such as individual infectious disease cases, survey submissions, and supportive supervision activities, among others. Event data provides more granular information than aggregate data, but it does not permit follow-up on individual cases or patients, making it well-suited for collecting anonymous data. In DHIS2, event data is entered using the Capture app. 
Now, let's look at a third example. In this scenario, health workers at a facility want to monitor the health of pregnant women throughout the series of visits before the birth of her child. To do this, they first register each woman in DHIS2 using the Tracker Capture app and then use the same application to enter or update data every time she completes the predefined checkups in the antenatal care program. What steps will you need to follow to enter these data? As in the previous examples, we go to the applications icon and, in this case, open the Tracker Capture app. Then search for the facility, select the program, and click on Register. The form contains data that allow to identify the individuals and track the services they receive. For data that are associated with a specific individual entity, most commonly a person, which will be monitored over time, we use the term tracker data. Like event data, tracker data can be captured at any time rather than on a predefined period. However, each specific tracker program, such as antenatal care, can contain a series of different data collection forms for things like test results, immunizations, etc., which are essentially a series of events that are associated with one unique individual's record. In DHIS2, tracker data is entered using the Tracker Capture app. To wrap up, there are three broad categories of data in DHIS2. Summary data captured at regular intervals, which we call aggregate data. Data on individual events that can be captured at any point in time instead of at predefined periods, which we call event data, and data associated with unique identifiers that allow tracking or follow-up of individuals, which we call tracker data. We use the Data Entry app for aggregate data, the Capture app for event data, and the Tracker Capture app for tracker data.